Welcome back everybody, Doug Scockle here with part two of our sh uh, shooting drills to help the players that are trying to change or improve their shooting form. And the drill that we're going to do right here is a four phase on the court drill that really helps a player with alignment. Now I say that and yet we could, uh, uh, you know in the previous uh, part one of the video I had this uh, shooting brace on here to help uh, with a player getting into that uh, shooter C position. So. Even in this one hand drill, you could slip the brace on if that was something that you needed to do. All right, so in phase one, we are going to shoot with one hand. And so I'm gonna get my alignment apparatus, my hand, my elbow, my knee, my, my foot, and, and I have my shoulder slightly turned here so I can help get my eye involved in, in, in this alignment. And I'm just gonna shoot one hand shots, probably from, you know, seven, eight feet away, six, seven, eight, nine feet away, whatever it is, and just continuous one hand shots to get that alignment uh, position that we want to get going right here. So, uh, the reason we do this is that a lot of players uh, put two hands, when they get two hands in the basketball, they bring the ball over and get it in the center of their face, and we don't want that. As you remember in the part one video, we want to be offset so that the edge of the ball is in line with my nose uh, right here. Now what's interesting is we're going to go to the court here in a moment and our on-court demonstrator uh, we didn't go through any mirror rehearsals or talk uh, uh, you know about alignment and that kind of uh, and those kinds of things and so even though he's shooting with one hand he does slightly bring the basketball over in this direction right here and so he doesn't offset it enough and what's interesting is that <clears throat> Uh, because of this, you'll notice that his follow-through, the fingers, point in that direction right there instead of pointing at the basket. This is what I call a compensating error. The first error is the ball is too much uh, over toward the center of the face, and if I extend my arm, I'm going to shoot the ball that way. So I need a compensating error to bring the ball back to the basket, and so that's what you see in, in this uh, player. So you need to monitor this. You, you know, you, you don't want to just turn them loose, so to speak, or if they've got a rebounder, make sure that, that player is getting that, you know, getting that ball so that you know, the edge of the ball is lined up, uh, excuse me, at the edge of the ball is lined up, uh, you know, with the nose. And then it's just shot after shot, grooving. Again, you remember the tape we had on the mirrors and that little elevator shaft or that little slot that we had? <clears throat> we're trying to recreate that motion and we've worked with that in our mirror rehearsals so that should be down pretty good but we you know you've got to be careful because kids will drift over uh, uh, you know in this direction a little bit All right so let's take a look at that floor demonstration And there's a couple of things that I want to take care of here. Number one is I want to make sure that you have my contact information. Uh, you can see my email address up there, dougscockle at aol.com. My phone number, you can call me in, in mornings or evenings and be glad to visit with you. And the other part here, you can see where uh, I put, uh, you know, where you can do a search, Doug Scockle YouTube. Uh, if you do that, uh, then when you see our videos, I've made lots of annotations on our videos, all of our videos. But what I've found is that there are some other sources that have picked up our videos, and so you're really not getting it directly off of YouTube. And as a result, when you view that, or sometimes it's on some of the small devices like your phone, the annotations don't show up, and there's a lot of information in those annotations. So again, if you would do a search, Doug Scockle YouTube, and then you can click on the uh, video that you want to watch and you'll see the annotations that go along with that. All right, so that's phase one. Again, one-handed shots. My, my balance hand is going to be hanging down to the side. I'm just going to rep and rep this vertical motion, this coming up the elevator shaft, keeping everything aligned in that position. Lots of shots. But again, you want somebody to monitor to make sure that we don't slightly slip over here because that's a, that's a habit a lot of players have. I want to keep everything Align. All right, so phase two, we're going to bring the balance hand into the picture, but we're not going to use it. So in phase two, we bring the balance hand to within 
you know, maybe an inch or two of the basketball, but it doesn't touch the ball. And we are going to shoot one-handed shots from this position because the balance hand is going to be up here. But I want to get across the idea that the balance hand doesn't interact with the shot. It is a one-hand shot. The balance hand assists in balancing the ball on this shooting platform. Here's our shooting tower right here. We've got the, the platform on top of that tower. And all the balance hand does when it does come in contact with the basketball is just helps balance the ball so it doesn't fall out of our hand, basically. But in phase two, we're going to shoot the basketball with our hand near, balance hand near the ball, but not touching the ball. So let's go to the floor and look at our demonstrator. All right, now, from that position, he's still going to shoot one-handed shots. But we're, what we're trying to get across the idea here, and especially if you've got a kid that that uh, drives their balance hand thumb through the ball, as some players will do. This eliminates that. It, it helps the player to understand this is a one-handed shot assisted by that left hand. But the left hand doesn't enter into the shot. It's a balance hand. It helps balance the ball on your shooting hand. It doesn't participate in the shot. So go ahead, uh, get the hand, uh, go ahead and just shoot one-hand shots again. So, okay, bring the balance hand up. So, we're, so this is phase two, right? All right, so I should mention that in addition to mirror rehearsals, this device is called the Cube, and I'll put contact information up on the screen here in just a moment for you so you can get more information about it. But this device is really helpful in getting your player to align and offset the basketball. That's a little bit of a problem that our demonstrator is having right now. And so in the next clip, what you're going to notice is that the demonstrator will get the correct offset position when he realizes that he has to square or square the uh, bottom of the Cube so that it is parallel to the floor. So let's take a look at uh, that next clip. Now there's a new uh, uh, training device out right now. Uh, uh, Charlie Wallace in Louisville, Kentucky has uh, this item called the Q. And uh, I think it's one of the best things I've seen in a long time to be able to help players in uh, learning you know, proper form, how to hold a basketball, for example, because in this one, I'm gonna place I'm going to place my shooting hand right under here, just like we would do if we're going to one-hand shoot, and the balance hand goes on the side of the ball. So, just to get across the idea, we're going to be in this position right here. So the player understands that he wants the, the bottom of the cube to be parallel to the floor. He doesn't want it tipped to the side or in any other direction, and so this is a great way to get across that idea. So go ahead and drop this hand right here. And then he would shoot the cube, not to the basket, but up a little short of the basket to me. Okay. So he's so anyway. It's just a it's a good way to show how we want to balance that ball on that shooting platform. I want to remind you that any time you're going to make some kind of a change to your shot, when you put the ball or put your our body parts in a new position, your immediate thought is going to be, "Wow, this feels weird." And my response to that is, is that well, it is different but it is the feeling of correct. I think that's the, the important thing to understand is that, you know, you have a comfort zone and you have a shot right now, even though it's flawed, it feels comfortable. It's wrong, but it's comfortable. And so you gotta have to get out of your comfort zone a little bit and uh, give, uh, you know, give a change that you're trying to make, give it a chance to work and it will. All right, so the next phase is gonna be phase number three. And in this one, we're gonna now bring the uh, balance hand a little bit more into play and what we're going to do is instead of being an inch or two away we're going to touch only the palm no fingers no thumb on the basketball right so we're going to get it up into here again trying to get across the idea that uh, this uh, balance hand is just here to assist with balance nothing else so again palm only no fingers and let's go to the floor and take a look at that It's real interesting when you get to phase three, when you bring the balance hand over and, and make the first contact with the basketball. Uh, it's interesting, it's not good, but it's interesting. But I, all of a sudden, you get a second hand in contact with the ball, and all of a sudden the ball starts to migrate or drift over here to get back into the center of the face. So you have to really watch that, really pay attention to that, 
and, and keep it in this position. So we're going to go back on the floor right now and uh, take a look at our demonstrator because that's exactly what happens. The, this hand makes contact with the ball and the ball begins to migrate back toward the center of the face. Yes, but what you have to be careful is as soon as, as soon as that left hand comes in contact with the ball, it's common for the ball to migrate back toward the middle of the face. So you really have to watch this. Again, the edge of the ball, right where his balance hand is, the edge of the ball should be right in the center of his forehead or you know, right in line with his nose. So he doesn't want to bring that ball over. And uh, Tony, do this for me. Come up right to here with the ball right in the center of your face and freeze it right there. Okay, so a lot of times I do video analysis, I'll see this uh, when I'm looking at a player uh, I call it Mr. Mr. Uh, do it again there, right there. I call it Mr. Basketball Head. And so this is a player who has incorrectly brought the ball into the center of the face, and uh, that's going to create some alignment problems. You're not going to shoot the ball as straight as you possibly could. So again, I, I've got palm, no fingers, uh, in contact with the basketball. But let me say this again. I see, I, I see Tony has already begun to let the ball drift over to the side. So... What that says to me is that we're going to go back to phase two. We're going to take the hand off the ball. All right, so when that basketball migrates uh, toward the middle of the face, you've really got a couple of problems. Is number one, when I get over here, I've lost my alignment. Now, uh, instead of having all those body parts that I want, my hand, elbow, knee, and foot in a straight line, uh, if you remember on the mirror in the, in the part one of this, we had the two uh, vertical strips of, uh, of masking tape that were four inches apart and every, everything lined up inside that slot, inside that little uh, uh, elevator shaft, if you will. Well, when, I, when the ball moves over here, this, the hand moves outside the tape on this side that's on the mirror and the elbow goes outside the tape on this side. So it's, I mean, you tell instantly you wouldn't be lined up. So it really creates an alignment problem. The other problem you have when the ball moves over to the center of the body is that if I did a stop action for uh, videoing somebody's shot and I did a stop action right there, now uh, you can see I've lost visual contact with the basket right now and, and we create a situation I call Mr. or Ms. Basketball Head right now. So again, if I'm offset correctly, Okay, if I'm offset correctly, the edge of the ball is going to be in line with my nose and my left eye is uncovered and so I don't lose sight of the basket at any time. So those two things are really uh, important uh, and why you don't want to let that basketball migrate to the, to the center of the face. Alright, so once you feel like you're doing a good job of not allowing the basketball to migrate toward the center of the face in, in phase three where the palm only is touching, we're ready to go to phase four. And in phase four, we're going to bring the balance hand now, everything, fingers and thumb, are going to be in contact with the ball. It's going to be on the side of the ball. Uh, again, I want to get across the idea, this is a one-handed shot. This, this hand doesn't do anything other than assist in balancing the ball on, on this shooting platform. Now I, I want to uh, remind you I did this in uh, uh, part one of uh, this video but I just want to show you again. If you look at the thumb and uh, forefinger of my balance hand right now I have a letter J and that's a correct uh, hand placement on there. What you really want to guard against is a kid that drops that thumb into an L position or even wider than that. That means they're gripping or grabbing the ball and that means you're going to have an interaction, you're going to have balance hand interference and you don't want that. Also, let me just turn on around right here, you can see that the thumb and forefinger on the shooting hand also has a letter J. Once again, you don't want to let that thumb move down into this position, but you want to maintain that, that letter J so, and, and the hands are just placed on the ball. Now, we're going to go to the uh, gym right now and take a look at some phase four shooting. Fingers on the ball, but keep the ball offset. Okay, and, and I'll go ahead and shoot. It's still a one hand shot. Okay, so we get the idea that the balance hand is not interacting uh, in this shot at all. Well, I think that one of the most important things in shooting the basketball is be able to shoot it straight. And the four phase shooting form drill that we've just shown you here will go a long ways in helping you and your shooters to achieve straight line accuracy. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We want to wish you well as you pursue excellence in this great game of basketball.